All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, Runge Kudde methods. And the basic idea behind Runge Kudde methods is an attempt to um, construct higher order numerical methods. Um, but in a way which only relies on you knowing the vector field, as opposed to what we had with the higher order Taylor methods, uh, where you needed to compute this um, sort of implicit derivative, it's like the differential equation, it's like to then infer um, sort of the higher derivatives of the solution, okay? Um, so let me sort of state this more precisely. So the idea, if you will, is to avoid uh, sort of analytical analytic uh, differentiation of the original differential equation. And in particular, it's like the, the goal is to um, compute something with nothing more than um, sort of the original vector field, right? So sort of the ideal method would only depend on evaluations of um, <coughs> the vector field. So how should we think about this? So one way to think about this is really sort of the contrast between, say, the Taylor polynomial for approximating a function versus, say, the uh, Lagrange interpolating polynomial, right? So in one case, you compute um, sort of, you know, the function value and its higher derivatives at a given point versus uh, trying to compute uh, the function values by a bunch of different points, okay? Um, and both of them, in principle, give you um, some reasonable approximation of the solution um, of the function, if you will. And um, so to now, if you will, it's like the whole point of this runge kudde approach, right, is to achieve um, a more accurate approximation of the numerical solution of the differential equation, um, but constructed from evaluating the vector field at, at more than one point, if you will. Okay, so let's see how you go about doing that. Okay. So let's uh, look at the following answer. So let's say that we have y at t plus h. So this is uh, the solution at the new time. And we want to write this in the following way. y of t uh, plus, say, w1 k1 plus uh, w2 k2. So the k1s and k2s are going to be an evaluation of the, um, the vector field, if you will. Okay. So... Um, let me actually put a h here, okay, and then k1 is equal to uh, f evaluated at the initial point t and y, and uh, k2 is equal to f evaluated at a slightly different time and a slightly different point. So let's call that t plus alpha h, and y is uh, beta times uh, h k1. Okay, so if you look at this, this is a little bit like, um, you know, it's like um, the initial point shifted by the tangent vector. Okay, so you can imagine this as maybe some approximation, if you will, of y at some different time than at the initial time t. Okay, and so I need to choose parameters uh, w1, w2 alpha and beta so that this is a good approximation. It's like of y at t plus h, if you will. Okay, so the question is, uh, so how to choose um, w1, w2, alpha and beta. So what's the criterion for choosing this? Okay, so what I'm going to do, if you will, is I'm going to compare um, so, of course, what you are hoping to achieve is that this approximation does a really good job 
of approximating the solution of the original differential equation. But of course, we don't know the exact solution of the original differential equation. So what we're going to do then uh, is we're going to compare it with the Taylor series approximation of the solution. Okay, so so I'm going to compare this with the Taylor expansion. the solution, the exact solution, if you will. Okay. All right. So we know that this is given by y of t plus h is equal to y of t plus h y prime at t plus h squared over 2 y double prime at t uh, plus h cubed over 3 factorial. It's like y triple prime at t, and so on, right? Okay, and then um, what you need to do is to um, write this in terms of f, okay? So you know this is equal to y of t plus h f uh, t y, right? Plus h squared over 2 y double prime is the total time derivative of y prime. The total time derivative of y prime is d dt plus uh, f d dy acting on f, right? Um, and um, <coughs> all right, so uh, and I'm going to take something which is big O of h cubed, all right? So I'm just going to stop here, okay? So this is y of t plus h f t y plus h squared over 2 uh, f t plus f f y plus big O of h cubed, okay? So I'm just going to uh, keep this here. y of t plus h is this. Right, and I'm going to compare it to what happens here. Okay, so I have this is for the candidate Runge Kutta method y of t plus h is equal to y of t plus uh, h w1 k1, which is f of t y plus um, h w2 f of t plus alpha h y plus beta h uh, f of t y. Okay, all right, so that's incorporating this plus this information. Okay, so I'm now able to erase this. Okay. Um, Right, so, so let's all see what we, we're at so far, right? There's y of t, there's a hf, a hw1 f of ty, that looks like this. And then there's this stuff, which uh, presumably is gonna be related to this and possibly this term here. So let's see where that goes. So what we're gonna have to do, obviously, is we're gonna have to tailor expand this term, right, and see what happens, okay? So as an aside, let me just sort of deal with that, right? So f of t plus alpha h comma uh, y plus beta h f t y, right, is equal to f of t comma y, right? So you can think of this as a delta t and you can think of this as a delta y, if you will, right? And I'm going to do this bivariate uh, sort of Taylor expansion, okay? So plus, um, so this is going to be uh, delta t times uh, f sub t, right? So that's an alpha h uh, df dt at ty, right? Plus uh, beta h f ty. So again, you should think of this term here as a delta t, right? And this term here is a delta y and then pair it with df dy at ty. 
and then uh, you know the this is just the linear expansion right for the bivariate Taylor series uh, and then whatever is left is big O of h squared right so you might say well this is big O of h cubed it's like but this is only big O of h squared but that's okay because there is a factor of h here which multiplies into this term so the big O of h squared term would multiply by h and so you're truncating both of these to big O of h cubed so so everything is is well and good okay so so that's an aside uh, so I can put this result into here okay so I get y of t plus h is equal to y at t plus h w1 <coughs> f of t y plus h w2 all right this is f of t y again plus alpha h df dt t y plus uh, beta h f uh, df dy and I'm going to omit the uh, the terms here plus big O of h squared okay so this is going to be y of t plus h w1 plus w2 f of t y right plus uh, h squared multiplied okay so just um, to be I'll put it over 2 here and then this is a 2 alpha h uh, f t term plus uh, 2 beta okay um, there's no h here because the h was already taken out here okay 2 alpha 2 beta f uh, f y term plus big O of h cubed Okay, so, so what um, you might expect then is that you would like this uh, Taylor expansion to agree with this Taylor expansion again up to this big O of h cubed term. Okay, and the way you do this is that you assume f is arbitrary and so f and all its derivatives are going to be somehow independent, right? So, um, so that means that I have to equate the coefficient for f, the coefficient for ft, and the equation for ffy. So, if I, so I equate coefficients Right for f, okay. So the f coefficient here is h w1 plus w2, right is equal to h. That's one equation. The uh, f t coefficient is um, sort of h squared over two, two alpha is equal to h squared over two times one. Okay. Okay, and then the f f y coefficient, right, is h squared over two, right, two beta is equal to h squared over two times one. Okay, so um, that tells me. Sorry, there's a w two missing here as well, right? W2. Okay, so that tells me that W1 plus W2 is equal to 1. It tells me that alpha W2 is equal to 1 half. And it tells me that beta W2 is equal to 1 half. So these are the conditions, it's like, which need to be satisfied, right, for um, this particular expansion to give you something which agrees with the Taylor expansion of, of the exact solution up to something which is big O of h cubed, okay? Um, all right. So, um, so let's uh, look at an example such as this. There's, there's more than one possibility, if you will, right? There's, so there's more than a single uh, numerical method of the form which we wrote down. It's like which is second order accurate, okay? So let's just look at one possibility. So one possibility is uh, alpha is equal to 1, beta is equal to 1, w1 is 1 half, and w2 is 1 half, right? So you can easily check that 
uh, it satisfies uh, all three of the uh, conditions on the coefficients w1, w2, and alpha and beta. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so this is known as Hewn's method. So it says that y at t plus h is equal to y at t plus h over 2. f at t and y um, plus h over 2 f evaluated at uh, t plus h, y plus h times f, t, y. Okay, so um, so you might ask where does this come from, right? So one way to think about this is that uh, it is related sort of the trapezoidal rule, if you will. Right, so the trapezoidal rule um, right, actually technically this is uh, I mean if you're thinking of it at the level of the equations, this is only uh, true up to that error term, right, so but I will replace uh, this approximate Equality, it's like with the numerical uh, values, right, to give you a numerical method. So this is sort of analogous to the trapezoidal rule, which says that yk plus 1 is equal to yk plus h over 2, uh, f evaluated at tk yk plus f evaluated at tk plus 1, yk plus 1. Okay? And um, the problem, of course, with uh, the trapezoidal rule is that yk plus 1 shows up on both sides, so you can't solve that exactly, but you sort of know that yk plus 1 is also approximately equal to yk plus uh, hf at tk yk, right? And if you use this, it's like here, right? So if you combine these two things together, right, then what you get is yk plus 1 is equal to yk plus h over 2, f at tk yk plus f at tk plus 1 yk plus h f at tk yk right which uh, is exactly uh, the Hune's method which we have here okay so this sort of gives you uh, one way to think about it okay um, and then there's, uh, there's another method. Let me just write down one more method. Okay, so another set of values which satisfy the constraints that uh, w1 plus w2 is equal to 1, right? And then uh, alpha w1 is equal to, sorry, alpha w2 is equal to 1 half, and beta w2 is equal to 1 half, right? Those are the constraints for the Roger-Kutta method, which we talked about, to be second order accurate. Uh, we talked about one possibility here. So another possibility is uh, alpha is equal to one half, beta is equal to one half, w1 is equal to zero, and w2 is equal to one, which gives you what is known as the modified Euler method. <coughs> which says that uh, y at t plus h is equal to y at t plus h f evaluated at uh, t plus h over 2, y plus h over 2 f t y uh, plus something which is of h cubed, right? So, but if you, if you uh, write this as 
yk plus 1 equals to yk plus hf at t plus h over 2, dk plus h over 2, yk plus h over 2, f at tk, yk, right? Then you get a method which is, uh, has a <coughs> sort of cubic local truncation error, which means that it's quadratic in terms of its global error. Okay, so this is, uh, this is sort of just uh, a systematic way, well, I mean, a sort of a relatively simple way of uh, deriving the um, second order, it's like Runge-Kutta methods uh, of a particular form, right? Um, and um, using the comparison, it's like um, of the Taylor expansion, it's like of that expression, with the, uh, the t sort of the, the Taylor expansion of the exact solution to then derive what are called order conditions, which are conditions on the coefficients which are necessary for the method to have a certain order of accuracy, okay? And, and so we will see it's like uh, more of these kind of Runge-Kutta methods that's like in a little bit, but this gives you an initial flavor uh, for methods which uh, can achieve higher order accuracy, but which don't require you to uh, take analytical derivatives of the vector field, they just rely on having access to the vector fields and uh, evaluating them at different points in order to construct um, higher order approximations. Okay, so let me just stop here for now. <laughs>